don't know what I was doing on all these these bigger bikes for so long. Oh, tarantula under the tail. Look at him. He's just chilling like a little belly. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. Man, this is an e-brake. Tire selection. This, I try to run this tire on every bike I have and will ever have that fits. It's the Mitaz E07 Dakar. It's a four six ply tire. It uh, it just holds up phenomenally. This is two thousand miles. So far, and I'm just now down to the center rib. So, when you first get the Mita Z07, it has about a quick, I don't know, quarter inch, or slightly under, maybe quarter inch uh, lip right there. But uh, once it gets down to this, it just holds forever. This tire can run 20, 30 miles at 40 miles an hour flat. For the Mita Z07, uh, they're both incredible tires, the standard and the Dakar. The yellow stripe indicates the Dakar version. 690 ADV found it and <laughs> turned me on to it. He's my research Nazi. Love that guy. Uh, I just highly recommend it. It's a spooning nightmare, but we did it. And this tire just lasts. On my uh, F800 GSA, I have six or 7,000 miles on the rear. And it's still got a trip left in it. It's still got a couple thousand left in it. 8,000 miles on a 500 pound bike. Uh, riding the way we do, that is impressive. <clears throat> the price is good, man. I think they're like one, 140, something like that. But hands down for the price, uh, this is the one. And I look forward in the description. If you have a better recommendation for a tire and a good report to back it up, I'm all ears, man. Leave it in the comments. For the front tire, we ran a Shinko E804. I'm not very fond of the Mitaz E07 front selection. I like something a bit more aggressive. I found the Shinko does really well, very resistant to cupping, and again, easy on the pocketbook. So it's a it's a great tire for what it is. The crash guards, we went with our sponsor's option for this, T-Rex Racing. It just works really well. I believe it bolts up to the, the Moto version as well. I'm not worried about the plastics. You know, this, this bike, will you can replace the plastics pretty cheap, but I was more wanted to protect it from some of the serious terrain that we were going to be taking them through and have taken them through. And uh, this does the trick, protects the radiator, the whole deal. All I want for Christmas is a steer and stabilizer. Got steer and stabilizer. Got steer and stabilizer. For our bash plate, we went with the Flatland Racing. Um, we did have to cut a small notch right here it, uh, to accommodate this crash guard. But it's done a wonderful job. I love the fit. It's flush to the motor. Maintains as much of the uh, clearance as possible. For the height, Kubelink. This is the KTM 82, I believe, which... Lowers, I believe they have three, a KTM 812 and Dakar. This one is the most extreme lowering. It uh, lowers at an inch and five eighths, I believe. And uh, that made this bike possible for me. It also created a little issue too. You have to cut the kickstand. <laughs> so we ended up having to lop about an inch and a half off the kickstand and then weld the foot back onto it, which I welded back on at a <laughs> wrong angle. Been a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it works. Never weld on the bike. It will fry your everything instantly the moment the current hits it. We also have a video on how we did the seat. Uh, I didn't buy the seat concept seat for the lowering. I modified the factory seat and it worked wonderfully. It's not quite as wide as the seat concepts is in the back, but it still works wonderfully. You can uh, check that link out as well. One of the woes of the KTM 690 Enduro R is the fuel filter failing. I suggest you carry an extra one, but I highly suggest replacing the fuel billet here. The one that KTM gives you is in set, and so when you open it, it's almost impossible for fuel not to, uh, for dirt not to fall into your fuel. This raises that system up and bypasses all that danger. Contaminated fuel, no bueno. I believe this one is a CJ Designs Cyclops light. Incredible light. A little bit of a booger to get in to fit inside of the cowling, um, but the cowling comes off pretty easy. It's actually kind of a fun install, uh, but it does take a little a little doing and a little thinking, but the light is wonderful. It'll cast a shadow on, uh, an, <laughs> on an incandescent light. Uh, we, of course, have our RAM systems. Um, I love these fold-away mirrors. You have your mirror, but they also fold in. So when you hit the trail, boom, uh, RAM system for all of our phone mounts and, and whatnot, definitely a must, in my opinion. Here are the attachment points, the mail ends. 
fast tracks tank bag when the bags not on there they just kind of dangle out totally stay out of the way they don't uh, impede any of the articulation of the steering the dalco fast tracks is by far the best bag for the price look for that bag in our video we teach you how to completely outfit one of these bikes or any bike for two hundred dollars or less with full luggage that's tank tail and uh panniers this is just a standard power port for usb works wonderfully Obviously, it's run down through there. You can jump the bike, etc. As a bit older rider, I definitely more prone to hand cramps. So uh, we use the Go Cruise cruise control. Here's the deal: they're expensive compared to the other ones. Just buy this one. Don't mess with the plastic ones. Don't mess with the knockoffs. I've been through all of them. This is the way to go. Go Cruise. Look forward in the links. Now, the tusk plate. It connects with the hard rack system. Uh, excellent plate. Many attachment points. Sexy, does the trick. We modified it to fit a caribou plate that we use to adapt a Pelican box into a towel bag. And it works really well. The actual latch point um, of the caribou happens to work with this divot here. You'd normally have to buy that piece. If you have any recommendations for um, hard luggage, portable luggage, uh, or more reports about <coughs> the Tusk system, uh, leave it in the comments. Leave us a link. Leave us a a way to get more data. Um, I wish I had had that data before I bought these. Again, as you'll see in the video, not entirely complaining, the price is right, but there is a fundamental flaw. Uh, we've done a lot, we know a lot, but we have a lot to do and a lot to learn as well. So please share it in the comments if you have any tricks up your sleeve. That's how a short guy can tour on a KTM 690 Enduro R comfortably, uh, nearly flat footed loaded down minimal clearance lost just an epic bike i don't know what i was doing on all these these bigger bikes for so long i think i'll do all of it story moto out